I am so excited that you decided to click on this video because fall is commencing around here on my channel and I have several Dollar Tree fall DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa, pregnant mama of three, and I have a big goal of getting to 100K by the time baby boy is born in October. So if you enjoy this video, share it with your family and friends, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Okay, friends, let's do this. Let's start fall DIYs. I am so excited. And we're going to start off with this wood round from Dollar Tree. I cut off the jute hanger and then I stain it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, which is my absolute favorite. Once I'm done staining it, then I wipe away the excess with a paper towel. And then because y'all know I'm super impatient, I take my blow dryer to it to dry it down the rest of the way. Next, I take three of these color your own pumpkin ornament. I think they're like color your own ornaments from Dollar Tree. They come out with them every single season. They come in a pack of like five or six, I believe. So I pull out three of them. I lay them down in the middle of my sign and then I tape at the top and the bottom. That way I have a nice idea of how big I need my middle to be because I'm going to give that middle section a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I once again hit that with my blow dryer and then I work on the pumpkins. So for the pumpkins, I am going to use white Waverly chalk paint, pumpkin Waverly chalk paint, and moss waverly chalk paint i'm going to paint the first one white and obviously the others in the other colors Now, when you're painting, there is no rhyme or reason or technique. You paint to your heart is happy. I personally love the distressed look, so I leave some of that natural wood showing through. But if you do not like that look, do not be afraid to give it a good coat of paint and even a second coat if you need to. Again, I like the distressed look, so I went in with a little bit of my gel stain and I gave the white one a little bit of dry brushing and then with the other pumpkins I just took what was on the end of my brush from the other colors and I just kind of played around and made them look as old and as rustic as I personally liked. Again personal preference do your pumpkins the way that you like them. So this was just not enough distressing for me. So I pulled out my mini chip brush and again, I took that gel stain and I just lightly brushed. I don't know why I do that, you guys. I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like the strokes should be a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> that's the OCD coming out in me. So I kind of use like the side of the brush, the tip of the brush. Um, I just use my brush and then once my heart and my eyes are happy, then I'm good to go to the next step. Next, I glue them down to that middle white part. And then I made three different bo or three bows, two of them with buffalo check ribbon and then one of them with a triple jute bow and if you guys want to know how to make a finger bow i will leave that link in the cards in the right hand corner next i go in with an old transfer this is from last year that's why i tell you guys if you see transfers you like grab them because they're reusable you can have them for years to come so i pulled this out of my stash from last year it says it says welcome to our patch and i transferred on the welcome to our patch at the top and then the little pumpkin and the autumn market you pick pumpkins 50 cents at the bottom now originally i tr i had transferred on my pumpkin with our new color rust 
However, I didn't really like it, so I ended up just using my transfer again, going right back over it with my gold, and I absolutely love it, you guys. Look how gorgeous this is. Now, we're going to make a double-sided sign, so bear with me just a second. I'm going to show you how to do the hanger once we do the second side. You guys, I'm aware that you can probably hear my neighbor mowing his lawn. Of course, like right at the time that I need to do this, he's over there mowing his lawn. I'm so, so sorry if it is annoying, but this is literally the only time that I have to do this voiceover. So let's just move along and um, just bear with me. I appreciate all you guys who stick around through my mistakes and my mess ups because guess what? I'm human, you guys. I am nowhere near perfect. So anyway, let's do the second side. I just give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once again, this is a transfer from last year. It is kind of like porch sayings, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, I pulled it out and I just love this saying. I just recently did a mini porch makeover and I will be uploading that on my reels on Instagram and TikTok. So if you guys are not following me over there where you can find daily content from me, I go on my stories. It's a lot more of like my personal life and just more of like me and my regular life and everything I have going on. So anyway, if you guys want to follow me, it's all things crafty too, but I just lay out my wording. I mark it and then give that space a distress coat of my Moss Waverly chalk paint. And then for the top and the bottom, this is a new transfer. I love it, you guys. It's got all the little different like backgrounds. So I chose the brick for this. I don't know if you guys saw it, but that wood one, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to use that one, especially for like Christmas time. Yes, I'm so excited. Anyway, so I transfer on that brick to the top and the bottom white space with my shimmer copper um, chalk paste and I wanted you guys to know that you can now get the 40% off of everything discount with the designer pass so just text me the word chalk couture to I'll leave the number here on the screen text me and I'll get that information over to you guys yes it's actually me texting you back I might not text back right away but it's definitely me <laughs> So next I transfer on my wording with my white chalk paste. So I start with the stay a while at the bottom just so that way I could space the gladger here above that nicely and I dry in between coats and you want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard and you also want to make sure that your paste is stirred up because that's when you have bleeding is when it's not stirred up correctly or if you press too hard or if you pull your transfer up too quickly. So just take your time, use your squeegee, do not squeeze or do not push too hard. And then once you pull that up, pull it up nice and slow and you get this absolutely gorgeous image. Now, again, this was a transfer from I believe two years ago, actually, a harvest sign. So I just transferred on that pumpkin with our new color, Rust. And then last but not least, all I did was take some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I cut off the end because the end has like tape on it. And then I just glued it all the way around this wood round. And then at the end, I cut it, glued it where the other piece met the piece that I came around with, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then I just glued that together nicely, trying to make that seem as seamless as possible. Now, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is rustic decor, in my opinion, so it doesn't bother me when it's not perfect. However, I do my very best to get it as perfect as, perfect as possible, like I said. 
Now, last but not least, to hang this, all I did was cut another piece and then glue it on either side towards the top. And that was it, you guys. Let me know which side is your favorite. I personally don't know. I think it's this side, but I can never choose as usual. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. But I love both sides, and it's getting me all in my feels for the fall season to arrive. My baby boy is coming, so... Doing DIYs is just a symbol that having him is literally right around the corner. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of these signs. Okay, friends, for the last DIY, now I have more DIYs coming Monday, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have that bell rang and set to all. That way you're notified. But anyway, I, I take two of the wooden arrows from Dollar Tree and then one of the reception signs from Dollar Tree and once again I paint them with the moss, the pumpkin, and my white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a distress coat as I always do. Now you can always paint these like before you go to bed and then when you wake up they'll be dry and you can continue on with your project. But I am the type of person when I am DIYing, I'm like, all right, let's go the next step. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> So I tend to use my blow dryer a lot in between coats, but sometimes I will paint and then go inside for the night and come back out the next day. So I did just want to mention that I know not everybody is, you know, a seasoned crafter. So I did just want to give you that little tidbit. But as usual, y'all guessed it, I distressed all of these with my mini chip brush and my gel stain. Next, I went to my computer and you guys, there, there's nothing to this. All I did was just pick three different fonts and then I just typed out the words that I wanted, printed them out, and then cut them down to fit on my signs. Next, I took my graphite paper from Arteza and I uh, traced these on. Now, I deleted the Word document, but if I have time, I will create this document again for you guys. It only took a few minutes. However, I'm a super busy mom, and I unfortunately deleted it by accident. I didn't mean to, but like I said, if I do get time, I will definitely create that for you guys. But I went ahead and I traced all the wording on all of my little directional signs, and then I went in with my white paint pen. I went over the wording on the moss arrow and the pumpkin arrow. And then for the white arrow, I went in with my black paint pen and I went over all of that wording. Now the best paint pens that I have found, and I have been doing this a long time, you guys. So the white, the best paint pen you can find is actually from Hobby Lobby. And then the black, my personal favorite is the Sharpie brand. I get a lot of questions. So again, I wanted to mention that. But then once again, I just distressed over that white wording. I felt it looked a little funny against the distressing. So I wanted to make it all blend in. And then with my black paint pen, I give the white wording shadowing and then with my white paint pen I give the black wording shadowing and all I did was just go to Google and typed in um, bold letter shadow and it, a picture popped up or a bunch of fonts pop, popped up that I was able to look at and kind of copy my shadowing from those fonts on Google. So anyway, moving on, I wanted to give these a little bit of character. So once again, I went in my stash. I pulled out these transfers. These are from a few years ago, and it was absolutely perfect. It had the hay bales. It had the corn. And for the pumpkins, I just found a little transfer that had a tiny little pumpkin on it. Now, in that big one that I just showed you, there were 
pumpkins like in a pumpkin patch but I just didn't have room for that so I did opt out or opt in for just a pumpkin by itself now for the corn maze sign there was no room on that one either so I just had this little piece of scrap wood I stained it and then I transferred on that little corn picture and then I also pulled out a plunger from Dollar Tree as well as this wooden plaque and gave them both a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. And once that was dry, then I took my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and once again dry brushed all the way around each one. Next, I glued down my arrows. Now, there was no particular way that I did this again I glued them down till my eyes were happy and then for the corn maze sign I kind of uh, glued that down going the opposite direction I just thought that it looked super cute and then I reinforced with some hot glue on the back to glue this down I used some uh, gel super glue from Dollar Tree and some hot glue made sure that that was nice and glued down before I let it go and then last but not least you guys I just embellished this with anything that I had in my stash I had this floral from last year from Walmart so I just cut those down to make those look like a corn stalk. So I just cut a few of the picks off and then zip strap them together. And then I just kind of fluff them out and glued them down to the bottom of my sign and glued like one little piece to the back. That way it wouldn't go anywhere. And then I just put some Spanish moss at the bottom with some pumpkins from Dollar Tree. And literally, you guys, that was it. Look how cute this turned out. I absolutely love it. It looks so cute on my front porch and I'm so excited for fall and I'm so excited to bring you guys more DIYs. So let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. Again, I can never pick a favorite, but I'm always curious to hear your opinions. And also, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for again sticking with me through all my mistakes. I'm pregnant, I'm tired, I'm doing the best I can to do a zillion things at once, so I just appreciate those who stick with me and give me grace. So as always, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning, you are worthy, you are gorgeous, and you can literally do anything you set your mind to. You are so strong, so don't forget it. If you guys need any Chalkator info or any ketone info, how I just recently lost 60 pounds and now I drink it for the energy, the mood, and the focus. Text me at this number that you see on the screen. Yes, it's me. So if you want Chalkator info, say Chalkator. If you want ketone info, say ketone and I'll get that over to you. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.